up and stay home and some of you may have that's all right uh, but we're glad you got out in the rain and you're joining us for uh, a special day here at glory day uh, we are so glad you're here if you want to sign in you can sign in on the connection cards you can sign in and check in on facebook but we're so glad that you're here uh, we will begin as we always do with our opening litany that is found up on the screen give thanks and call upon god's name Spread the news of what God has done throughout history. Spread the news of what God has done throughout the world. For God is great and God is here. Let's worship God together. Amen. We'll continue in song. Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder. Consider love the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through love, the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God is so not sparing, send him to die, I scarce can take it. Sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. On praise and adoration, accept our eyes on Him who has endured, accept our mind 
praise to the one who is most high. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy my heart will find. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. And sings my soul, I say to God to thee, How great thou art! How great thou art! And sings my soul. I say be God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. We now will recite our statement of faith together. It's found up on your screen. It is a part of this community. Uh, for about a decade or so, and it's an important part of who we are. So let's read it together. We believe that the way we treat one another is the fullest expression of how we live out our faith. We find our approach to God through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is our model for living. And we recognize the faithfulness of other paths, which may also lead people to an experience of God. We stand in God's grace, and we live that grace in our attitudes and actions toward one another. We understand the church as a community of people who together make up the body of Christ as we strive to serve the spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of others. We are inclusive as Christ was and welcome all people seeking a closer relationship with God. We believe that the questions are as important as the answers, that living the mystery is a more sacred position than church tradition and doctrine, and we strive to love all, serve all, in Jesus' name, as we proclaim our mystery of faith, that Christ died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. You may be seated, and I'm going to invite the kids to come forward for their time with me. fun, right? Did you like that music? Did anyone dance a little bit while they were coming up? Maybe a little? Hey, how many of you uh, are going to be in Halloween uh, costumes this week, right? Some of you are going to do Halloween? We had a bunch of people at our Halloween trunk or treat yesterday, about almost 100 people, uh, and we had some great characters. Some of you were dressed up in really cool things, uh, and uh, I was a doctor. I healed everybody, right? Yeah, that was fun. It was fun yesterday, right? All right, so I want to ask you... You were a Ninja Turtle? I know you were a Ninja Turtle. I know you were Princess Elena. Uh, and that was a whole lot of fun. But you know what? There's some things that are also fun. Any of you like to read? Anybody like to read? Raise your hand. Oh, wow, we got some good readers, I bet, up here. Uh, have any of you ever read or had read to you any of the Harry Potter books? Anybody? Little Harry Potter? Uh, well, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. I'm going to talk a little bit about it later on. But one of the things, I've watched all the movies, I've read all the books, you've just watched The Sorcerer's Stone. Well, I think they're really good movies. And so one of the things that happens in, that, in the story of the Harry Potter is that there are different people who are all great friends, and they keep going through their life, uh, and the story of Harry Potter, yeah, the story of Harry Potter is these three friends, and they're really close, Ron, Hermione, and Harry Potter, that's right. And they go to Hogwarts school. And everybody who goes to Hogwarts school, they have to figure out which house they're in, right? And so the, they're all in Gryffindor, yeah. So every school has their, every house has their own house colors, right? 
Uh, and I have my Gryffindor uh, Quidditch team captain hat, uh, and I have my, gr you thought it was a different color hat, didn't you? No, no, I'm being good, right? Uh, so when, I, when, when Cindy and I went on vacation recently, we went to the place where Harry Potter was filmed. It's a, called a film studio, and they had all kinds of cool stuff there that showed how uh, the story got made and how some of the, the special effects were done, and it was just amazing. But one of my favorite things was looking at the, the changes that went through Ron and Hermione and Harry Potter. They started filming those movies when they were 11 Wait. years old. Wait. How many of you are 11? Anyone 11 or close to 11, 11, 12? All right, we got a couple. That's how old they were. And they started starring in a movie at 11 years old. And they did all these movies Imagine over the. Okay, the we're gonna sh we're not gonna share that one. All right, so we got they got ten years that they were filming that right. It was so cool, and I love the fact that today, the movies have been done for a while, but they're still friends. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you today is, um, do you have friends that you've had for a long time? Anyone have some friends? How long have you had one of your friends? Like your whole life? Yeah? Anybody else? How long have you had a friend, Patrick? This same friend? Four, four, or five four or five years. How about you? How long have you had your friend? Since I was like one. Since you were like one or two? Yeah, that's cool. How about you? Since well, I was five. Since you were five? Yep. Ellie, how about you? Since you were one? That's a long time. That's like yeah. ten years, right? Since I was a baby. Since you were a baby. Y'all were just rocking beside each other, right? Just rocking those. How about you? Huh? Your whole life, that's cool. Um, I have one of my really good friends uh, that I've only had for a little while, but I have another friend uh, that I've had since I was 16 years old. I moved around some when I was a kid, and so I didn't really stay in touch with some of my friends from elementary school because we moved away, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have text messages, uh, we didn't have Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, you know, InstaFace. Uh, we didn't have any of that stuff, right? And so we kind of lost track with each other. Uh, and now we reconnected. And it's really fun having a friend. What's the best benefit of having a friend? What's the best thing to have? What's the best thing that you get with your friendship? Now we get to play. You get to play together. Yeah, you get to do fun stuff together. What else do friends are, are good for? Um, when you're feeling lonely. When you're feeling lonely, that's right. What else are good friends good for? Well, if you have friends, you know you're never alone. That's right. If you have friends, you know you're never alone. What else? Anybody? Those are pretty good. Yeah, Ellie? You have someone to trust. That's right. You're being loved by somebody. You're being loved by somebody. That's right. Well, a lot of people talk about their relationship with God as a friendship or with Jesus, that they're with me all the time. They love me no matter what. It's like uh, there's a song that's called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Jesus is with us no matter what, every single moment of every single day, loving us just as a friend and loving us so that we can even be better in our lives. And sometimes our friends do that for us too, right? So one of the things I want you to think about this week is how can you be a really great friend this week, right? How can you be a really great friend? Uh, by being kind, uh, continuing to be, you know, to, to do the threat, things that your friend wants to do and not just what you want to do. Uh, and hopefully you'll have friends your whole life, just like some of, the, uh, some of our other folks. And just like me, I have this friend that I've had for 40 years. That's a long time to have a friend. And we talked just on Thursday, and it was like we had never uh, missed a couple of weeks in our phone calls. It was really cool. I know, we're old. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, so, uh, no, no, it's a different friend. Let's pray together, can we? God, we thank you for being our friend. Thank you for finding us and loving us. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who can be our friend, our savior, our mentor. Help us, God, to be kind and good. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So you're going to head out back that way. You've got Sunday school today. Where you go, I'll go Where you said I'll stay 
Where you move, I move. I will follow you. Where you move. Oh. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my sight, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. You alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you said, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow you Where you love, I'll love Where you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you I will follow you Light into the world Light into my life I will live for you alone You're the one I seek Knowing I will find All I need is you alone It's you alone Where you go, I'll go Where you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move I will follow you Whom you love, I'll love Will you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you I will follow you I in you There's life everlasting In you There's freedom for my soul In you Joy, unending joy I will follow Where you go, I'll go Where you say, I'll stay Where you move, I'll move I will follow Where you love, I'll love Where you serve, I'll serve If this life, I lose I will follow Where you go, I'll go where you stay, I'll stay Where you live, I'll move I will follow you Whom you love, I'll love Whom you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow I will follow Thank you, thank you. Uh, little technical difficulties today. Sorry about that. Uh, we are continuing, as I said uh, last week, we're continuing our Old Testament series, and we're reading today, preaching from one of only two books of the Bible that are named for or are about women. Uh, one of them is Ruth that we're going to talk about today. Anyone know what the other one is? Esther, that's right. For those of you who are interested, we're doing a trip to Lancaster to the uh, theater to see Esther next June. So uh, uh, you can sign up now. We've got some uh, save the dates in the other room. Uh, so I want to talk to you just a little bit about why Ruth is important. Um, it's, a, it's a story that it comes early in the text because it's a story that centers around the famine. Uh, we remember, uh, I hope, that as the Jews were living in their homeland, they experienced a huge famine and went to Egypt. There were other times when other families had to make difficult choices about whether or not to stay in Judah or stay in other places. Uh, and we have today the story uh, of a man named Elimelech. And Elimelech had two sons. Uh, his sons were Mahon, Malon excuse me, and Sileon. And these sons uh, were his pride and joy, right? You've got a Jewish man who has two sons, uh, and that's what every Jewish man wanted. He wanted to have sons uh, because sons were the, the thing that you absolutely had to have to survive and for your heritage, for your inheritance and all of these things to move forward. So he has two sons and he has a wife. They're experiencing a famine. Uh, 
uh, and they decide to go to Moab. And Moab is a different country. It's a place that had very different gods, very different rules, very different traditions. Uh, and so Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and their two sons head to Moab. Now, we get sort of a dense story of what happens next. They go to Moab, the two sons marry, and within 10 years of them going to Moab, Elimelech is dead, Malon is dead, and Chilion is dead. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, all right? So here we go. This is the moment when Naomi says to her daughters-in-law, we need to go back to my home. I am going back to my home. And she says this beginning in chapter 1, verse 6. She started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people in giving them food back in Judah. So she set out from a place where she'd been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters, Oh, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grants you the serenity and security that each of you in, this, in a house of a husband. Then she kissed them, and they all wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said again, No, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying others? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said nothing more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women there said, Is this Naomi? And she said to them, Call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi, when the Lord has dealt harshly with me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back from her with her from the country of Moab. They came to, the Beth, to Bethlehem at the beginning of of the barley harvest. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, bless the reading and the hearing of this your holy word, but especially, O oh God, bless its doing. Amen. In Jewish culture, women had two purposes. That was it. Two purposes. One of their purposes was to marry and have children. The other purpose was to parent, mother, those children until the boys were old enough to go to rabbi school or to uh, synagogue school, and the girls continued to learn in the home how to be good homemakers. For a woman in that time period, the only way they had worth was if they were married or had children. In this story, we don't get the reasons why Elimelech and Malon uh, and Sileon die, but we get, this con we get this condensed story, and it says, 10 years, and her husband and her two sons are dead. Now, in Jewish culture, the only way that you could be taken care of was to have a man who could take care of you. 
there was, we've talked about before, a system of Leverite marriage. If you had your, if your husband died, you would marry uh, either his brother or his nephew or a cousin so that you could be taken care of in his household. And so when they came to Moab, they began to uh, meet people of other cultures. And these two sons of Naomi met and eventually married two Moabite women. That happened often in these sort of movements back and forth to different lands as the Jewish people are escaping either some sort of onslaught of armies or famine or some other reason. And they get married, and we don't hear anything except that they died within 10 years of them getting there. Now, one of the things that's so telling is that in the very beginning of this story, it says that the two daughters-in-law were going back with her. And the probability is that the reason they were going back is because they had no one to care for them there. They were daughters-in-law of a dead man. They were widows of two brothers from a distant land, so they did not have nephews or uncles or brothers to do Leverat marriage with, and so there was really nothing for them there. And Naomi says, all right, I'm going back. And at first, the two women say they're going, and Naomi seems to be okay with that. But the further she gets along, she says, no, daughter, stay here. Please turn away. Don't come with me. And Orpah says, all right. And she kisses her. She cries, and she goes home. We don't get a whole lot of backstory there, but she chose to stay in Moab. It's Ruth that this story focuses on for that moment and in, obviously, through the rest of the book. She looks at her mother-in-law and says, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. The gods that are yours will be mine. It's a powerful, powerful image. And I cannot tell you how many times I have done weddings and somebody said, I want us to say that line. And I want us to read that text. And there's a part of me that sits there and goes, okay, but it's not a marriage. It's a text about love and commitment between family members. And they're like, we don't care. We love that. Where he goes, I'll go. Where she goes, I'll go. And I'm like, all right, I don't want to fight about it. If people have it's important to people, that's fine. But see, here's the deal. What started out as a mother-daughter-in-law relationship has obviously moved into uh, a relationship of great love and sincerity maybe even intimacy in the way that they cared for one another. It is a story about friendship, right? I have, on a number of occasions, loved to go see buddy movies, right? Buddy movies, girls movies, people who are, you know, your, your BFF, uh, your squad, uh, which someone told me the other day, I still don't know what a squad is. I don't have a squad. Uh, maybe you do. I could someone be anyone? Will you be my squad? I could use a co yeah, there, Russell. Wait, yeah. There you go, brother. There you go. There's my squad right there. Uh, and, and I like stuff like that. Like, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. There's all kinds of movies. There was a couple of, uh, some of our kids were dressed up like the Sandlot movie, those kids who are just amazingly best friends. Uh, and uh, I, I love the best friend relationship that happens in Harry Potter. It starts when they're young, when they have, you know, they all show up not knowing each other at Hogwarts for the first time. This is the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uh, and it is an amazing place. And if you're not a part of that world, that's okay. I am. Uh, and I have loved it from the very first time. And one of the reasons I loved it so much is because you have these three friends, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, who become best buds through sort of being thrown together in a couple of instances. They all three became Gryffindors and lived in the same house uh, uh, in, as a part of the school. And that friendship evolves over the 10 years of the movies, and it's powerful. I love the way that they relate to one another and love one another. I moved a lot growing up, and so it was really tough for me to have lifelong friends. As I was saying to the kids, some of the kids that I knew when I was like in, in elementary school and junior high and high school, I didn't really sort of keep up with and follow. When I left Andrews, Texas, I left Andrews, Texas. I have never been back there, uh, not to a single uh, reunion. I, I, little tiny West Texas town 
uh, is just not where I feel comfortable anymore. So I've, I've not even gone back. But I met this one friend, uh, and I met her through the United Methodist Church, and she's the 16, uh, we met when we were 16 years old, and we've recently, over the last maybe 20 years, gotten reconnected. And it's been really fun to have that friend. I had never had a best friend like I have right now. Never. Not in my entire life. I interviewed at the Lutheran Seminary in Philadelphia 10 years ago. And as I was interviewing, there were a lot of cracks about my accent. There are a lot of folks who were like, you know, we can't really understand you, you know. Uh, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, do you have cows at your house? And I'm like, no. I just sound like I'm from Texas. I am, but I don't have cows. And they were like, do you have boots? And they were just ridiculous questions. And so I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, I am completely out of a fish out of water right now. There is, you know, I am so different. West Texas kid up in the big city of Philadelphia. I just kept thinking there's no way that I will survive here. And we were taking a tour around, and Katie Day was taking me on the tour, and she dropped by uh, uh, our pastoral care and theology uh, professor's office. And she introduced me to Storm Swain. A little bit close to the same age. She has, uh, from the very beginning, when she was about 20 years old, uh, long, long white hair. She was striking, and I walked in, and I said hello to her, and she opened her mouth, and she started talking. And instantly, I thought, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one with a weird accent. She's from New Zealand. She has a Kiwi accent. And everything she says, I have to translate sometimes. When we're driving together, she says, use that indicator, use that indicator. And I'm like, I don't know what an indicator is. Obviously, she says, which is the lane changing thing. Yeah, it's sitting there. I don't know what to do with it. She tries to teach me. Uh, but she has all these words that she says differently. And it was almost in that moment that she and I both talked about, we just sort of clicked. It was just this moment where we both sort of thought, you know, we're, we're like each other. And she has been my best friend for the last 10 years. When Cindy and I got married, she stood beside me as my best person. Last week, she was up in uh, Martha's Vineyard where she lives, and the phone rang, and I thought, oh, Storm's calling. So I answered it, and I heard this. Hey, do you have a different cut of meat for this? Could you cut me some from the back? <laughs> Storm, are you there? Yes, I want that whole cut. I don't want it cut that way. To slice it the other direction. She's giving meat directions to somebody, and I'm thinking, Storm, and I'm saying it louder, and then she turns to her son and starts talking to her son, telling him what ice cream to go get. And so I just thought, you know, she pocket dialed me. She doesn't call it butt dialing. She calls it pocket dialing, right? So she had pocket dialed me. So I hung up, and then about an hour, I thought, I'm just going to mess with her a little bit. So I sent her a text message, and I said, did the butcher ever cut the meat the way you wanted it? <laughs> and I got this, like, row of question marks back in a text. And I said, bird told me. And she's like, what dang bird told you the me? And I texted back and I said, you pocket dialed me and I heard you talking. And she said, you know what's funny? As I was going to the grocery store, I thought I need to call Karen this afternoon so we can catch up. And just that moment, she put her hand in her pocket and my name came up and she called me. And I just smiled about it, you know? Do you all have people that when they call or when they write or when you see them, you just sort of smile? It's that, it's that thing that sort of makes you feel brighter and better and the, the world seems a little bit sunnier. That is what we get when we have relationships with folks and they nurture us, they, they propel us, they're compassionate to us, they spark in us our best selves. Sometimes that is our partner, our significant other, our wife or our husband. Sometimes that is a sister or a brother. Sometimes that's a niece or a nephew. Sometimes it's a neighbor next door. Sometimes it's a best friend you just met a couple of years ago. And other times it's a best friend that you've had your entire life. Relationships that call us to be our better selves. Relationships that make us feel warm inside on a cold day. Relationships that tell us you're not alone. Relationships that let us feel that grip of collaboration 
and love and grace. That's the relationship that Naomi and Ruth had, a relationship that had spun over 10 years. And Ruth looked at her mother-in-law and said, I will not let you go back alone. I love you so much. I'm giving up my life here because I don't have much of a life here, and I'm going with you. In this speech that the, uh, the author of Ruth talks about and, and shares with us is a loving, loving message about how we can be there for each other. I grew up singing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That friendship that we can have with Jesus is as deeper than our physical and our relational uh, situations with friends. But it is nonetheless a friendship that is nurtured in grace, presence, being. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with people who have just been diagnosed with cancer or have just been put into a hospice situation or were awaiting a transplant. And I've sat with them, and not one of them have said, I wish I worked harder. I wish I made more. I wish I had a bigger house. I wish I had more of this or that. What they talk about is they wish they had better relationships with folks that they lost folks that they had sort of lost touch with. What they said is that they wanted to have deeper and better relationships with their significant other, with their children, with their parents. What is so important to us is that we not let other people be alone when they need us and that we open our lives so that others can be there for us when we feel alone. And I know it probably feels like I'm in sort of this, this pattern. The last couple of weeks, several of these texts have sort of led us to think that we are not in this alone, but I think it's a word that we all need to hear right now. No matter what you're going through, there are friends, friends in this place, friends that you have had for years and friends that you've just recently met. There are also friends that you've lost, significant people that you've lost, and there's holes there from the way that they served as your Naomi and Ruth. My prayer for us as a community of faith, as we continue to grow and to nurture this community, to try to be all that we can be, that we friend each other, that we live as friends, supportive, loving friends, that we look out for one another. And if we pocket dial, it's someone that they smile when they see your name come up. When you just think of them and send them a card in the mail. When you see them in a room somewhere at the hospital or you see them at their home or you see them at some event and you just walk over and say, man, you make my life better. I have that with a couple of people in my life, and I know that I'm blessed. I bet you do too. The ways that we nurture and love each other and look out for one another is the truest example of how we live out our faith, right? It says that in our statement of faith. That's when we're our best selves. So let's friend one another. Be good friends to one another and continue to nurture our relationships as God, through his son Jesus Christ, our friend, leads us. Amen. We come to that time in our service where we share joys and concerns together. I remind you that we're live streaming and you may not want to do last names as well. Um, I'm going to do a couple. Uh, Arthur Crowther, who was a member uh, for some time, uh, a, a number of years ago. He left like in the 90s, so some of you may not remember him at all. Uh, Arthur Crowther had moved to Florida uh, to be with his daughter, and he passed this last week. Uh, we're having his memorial service here uh, on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. I uh, also want to lift up our dear friend and senior ministries person, Betsy. Uh, she's been sick for a lot of this week, is still not feeling really great, uh, so uh, she got some bug of some kind, so keep Betsy in your prayers. Uh, also want to ask that you keep Ed Brucker in your prayers. He said it was okay to share him. Uh, John C., who's dealing with di diabetes, uh, and uh, uh, Nolene, who's dealing with some, uh, some health issues. Any others that you would like to lift up? Yes. 
Karen and Patricia, they were doing some tests and trying a new treatment, right? She's back in the hospital. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I saw one over here. Amy? Carol had knee surgery, all right? Peggy with her upcoming surgery. Yes, Peggy's having some surgery. We'll think of you, and we'll keep you in our prayers, all right? Other joys and concerns that folks want to lift up? Yes, Russell. All right, Seamus, who had open heart surgery, uh, wow, and just a couple of days old. Yeah, we'll keep him on our prayers. Yeah, we'll keep him on our prayers. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. I appreciate you giving us an update. Yeah, Katie's been on our prayers for uh, for a couple of weeks, so we continue to pray for her. Yes, ma'am. All right, one-year-old at CHOP who just finished their first the uh, 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 progression of chemo and has more to do ahead of them. So uh, lots of little ones needing some of our care. Yeah. Annalise, say it again. All right, I didn't know that. We'll keep Annalise and you guys in our in our prayers. Other joys and concerns folks want to lift up? Continued prayers for Alyssa. Continued prayers for Alyssa, yeah. Uh, ask for continued prayers with my dad. The method of chemo didn't work uh, this last week, so they're trying a different method uh, in a week and a half. It's just been, a, a, you know, just been frustrating. But he starts on November 1st. Any others? Yes, one more, sorry. Could you remind me what your mom's name is? Kathy. Kathy. All right. There's a lot going on in our community. We have people who are recovering from surgery, people who are preparing for surgery, little ones who have uh, great stories to tell from their surgeries uh, and wonderful opportunities for us to continue to care and be friends. Uh, to these folks who are in need. So as we go to God in prayer, uh, may you remember all of these persons who have been lifted up and others that you kept quiet in your own hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, on this wet Sunday morning, a day when we can see the beauty of your creation through the fall leaves and feel the warmth of your love washing over us like a cool rain, we are immensely grateful for all that you have given us. We give you thanks for our families, for our friendships. We give you thanks for our work and our bodies. We give you thanks for this community of faith. We give you thanks for the ways that you have blessed us so abundantly. Holy God, we come into this place this day following your Son, our Savior and friend, as we move through the weeks and months ahead, may we really be there for one another. No matter who our friendships are with, may we nurture them and care for them. Holy God, we do have a long prayer list today, and we know that you're active in all these situations. Help us to continue to actively minister and be there for them. God, we thank you for this congregation for its lifelong commitment to being a part of this community in profound and important ways. We thank you, God, for the staff, the committees, for the persons who are in leadership, for those who are about to be elected at our next congregational meeting. We give you thanks for all of this, God. Your son was your gift to us. He came and lived with us and taught us so that we may live more fully into who you call us to be. May we hear the lessons of his entire life, but especially remember him and those who know this prayer as well as we do. When we say this prayer together, may we, our voices be united with others around the globe. When we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I ask the ushers to please come forward for this morning's offering. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Our God have been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. anniversary and every time we have an anniversary or a big celebration what do we have we have cake we have cake and many people say we never get to see the cake by the time we get over there it's cut so here's the cake 
and it needs to be gone. So you guys trowel in there uh, and have some cake. Uh, it is our 63rd anniversary. It is an important time just to recognize uh, that this place has been in this community uh, for a long time. At the firehouse here, uh, being a part of this community, I think is a really important piece. Uh, our founding members, those who are still with us, has diminished over the years. We don't have as many anymore, uh, and they're not able to move as much or to be here as well. So I thought we would just sort of recognize uh, anyone who's been a part of this church for 10 years or less, ever Everybody is hands up, right? And who has been part of this church for 10 years or less? How about 20 years or less? 30 years or less? 40 years? 50 years? 60 years? 61? 62? Six, all right. But we have a couple who were uh, part of this church within the first two years. Thank you, Betts Brothers, for representing today. We appreciate that. Uh, so we just want to say uh, it is a lovely day uh, to stay for cake and stay out of the water for a few minutes. Uh, the kids were going to practice after this, but Angela was supposed to be here and she's ill. Uh, so the kids will not practice this week. We're rescheduling it uh, so that you can all go get cake. All right? You can all get, uh, go get cake. So we hope that uh, uh, you'll, uh, you'll stay and do that. A couple of other things. Uh, we have our Tuesday night meal, uh, which is where we feed those folks in our community. Uh, some are food insecure. Some of those folks just want to be a part of a community of faith having meals together. Uh, and we have a hamburger and mac is a ha something uh, casserole. It's a pretty easy one. I'm wondering if a couple of people might take one to bring home uh, or bring to us uh, by Tuesday at 4. You can drop it off in the church office. Uh, anyone else? I know I'm just driving them crazy because I'm just walking all over the place. Uh, they don't like that when I move. Yeah. Anybody else? We got a couple more. Anyone else willing to do one? All right. The Betzes. All right. So as I'm talking about this, uh, what I want you guys to be aware of uh, is we have a lot going on right now. On the back of the bulletin, uh, you can see a lot of that stuff lined up. Anybody else? We got any more? All right. Thank you. Would you, would you be kind and pass that down? I know that's, a, that's loud, but this is something that we do, uh, and it's a really important part of our life. So I want to just make a couple of other announcements. As I said, there's a lot going on in the life of the church, and you can see all of that uh, on the back page. We had a delightful time yesterday with the trunk or tree uh, and had a blast. Aiden was one of our uh, great uh, uh, friends of the program. He gave us his action card uh, so that we could buy the food for yesterday. These Thrive In action cards help us significantly do a lot of the things uh, that we're able to do. So thank you for sharing that with us. Aiden, we appreciate it. Uh, so you can see there's events back on the, uh, on the back page. Uh, a couple of things I want to highlight, obviously, is the cake uh, that we're going to have in just a little bit. Cake is on my mind for some reason, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, also, church council applications are due. Uh, they're technically due today, but if you're still on the fence thinking about whether or not you want to run, we would love for you to think through that. I've asked a couple of people who said, been there, done that, right? And I didn't even get the t-shirt. I didn't want the t-shirt. I'm done. Church council is a great thing, actually. We have some very uh, uh, important and passionate conversations. We get excited about what's going on in the ministry of the life of the church. We have folks from all different walks of life, from different worship services that are a part of that uh, right now. And we would love for you to consider if you have uh, the time and the energy and want to, to do that. Uh, so the applications are on the back table. You can pick those up uh, and leave those uh, back there, or you can bring them by the office in the next couple of days. We're not going to close the door uh, if we didn't get it today. Uh, so that's going on. Women's group is going to meet Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be talking about cathedrals and churches in England and why churches actually look the way they do. Uh, we're going to not have our Growing in Grace series either Tuesday night or Wednesday morning because of scheduling conflicts. Uh, and Noli really needs some help for the St. Francis Inn. Uh, there's a couple of people that she needs to help. Uh, Noli, will you raise your hand just in case? Those of you uh, who might be willing to help, it's a couple of hours on Thursday afternoon, uh, and it's a wonderful way to serve. Uh, if you can do that, please check in with Nolene before you go. A couple of other meetings that are listed there, uh, and I want to make sure that you put on your calendar now the congregational meeting on November 10th. 
We're going to have one worship service at 10 o'clock. Then we're going to have uh, a meal afterwards while we're voting for new council members. We're going to get an update on the budget. We're going to get an update from the call committee. Uh, we're going to get uh, an update on strategic plan and a couple of other things. Uh, and the most important thing is, a, is that we're going to be doing is electing uh, council members. Uh, so we're going to provide the meat. And if you will sign up to provide either a side dish or a dessert, uh, this is a really important moment in the life of the church. This church is going through a lot of transition. The more we know, the more we stay a part of these conversations, the better that is. So we invite you to please be there for that. Any other announcements that I'm missing? All right, well, let's rise and end our service with song. <clears throat> your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. right now but save me a piece all right may you go in God's grace and do the work of good friends of one another and follow our own friend Jesus Christ in all the ways he leads us go in peace amen, amen.